I arrived here yesterday from Gibraltar, whose inhabitants are constantly aware, as we perhaps are not, of the link between sovereignty and liberty. Speak to any Gibraltarian, any of you who have visited the Rock will know this, and they are very quick to, set to tell you, we want to remain British. And when you ask them what they mean by that, they'll say, we want to live as a free people living under our own laws. And I found myself wondering, do we still want to be British in that sense? Do we still value it as they do? Our country's happiest export, our supreme contribution to the well-being of the human race, was the idea that laws should not be passed nor taxes levied except by our own elected representatives. That is... That is our sublime inheritance, stretching back through the struggles of the suffragettes and the chartists, back through the glorious revolution and the civil war, back even before the Great Charter, to the folk right of Anglo-Saxon common law. This extraordinary idea that the government is subject to the law, rather be than being the place from where the law emanates. And sovereignty of parliament in our tradition has always been shorthand for sovereignty of the people. It is the mechanism we use to hold our governors to account. It is the way we ensure that they are our representatives and not our rulers. And so when our members of parliament turn around and deny us our right to decide whether to live in an independent country, they doubly deny the principle of democratic sovereignty. They deny it because they want to subject this country to an alien legal system which is beyond democratic control, and they deny it because they deny us the mechanism to decide for ourselves what kind of country we want to live in. Now, it used to be possible. It used to be possible in this country to say, referendums are not really part of the British tradition. They're not really compatible with our tradition of parliamentary sovereignty. They may do very well for people in hot countries where the leaders wear sunglasses. They don't happen in places like this. You know what? That argument has gone. There have been 45 referendums since 1997. If we can have a vote on the precise method by which we choose our MPs, we can have a vote on whether they get to run the country. But you know what? We don't need to make that argument. All three parties have made it for us. All three parties, as Douglas told us this morning, in the last parliament were supporting a referendum on Europe. And so now they're down to their last ditch argument, the Sir Humphrey argument. It's a very good idea, Minister, but now is not the right time. Well. Well, here is our answer. Here is our answer to that question. We now find ourselves on the hook for £12.5 billion to prop up a currency that we didn't join, not counting our basic EU membership contributions. If now is not the time to determine this issue, when is a better time? And you know what? If the vote doesn't go through on Monday, we should take a leaf out of the Brussels rule book. We should come back with another 100,000 signatures and keep putting the question until we get the answer that we want. Our parliament was once prepared to defend with force of arms its prerogatives, its exclusive right to make law and levy taxes. What would previous generations of MPs have thought those brave, quarrelsome men, those patriotic men who knew in their bones that their country was beginning its ascent to greatness, what would they think if they could see their successors handing away those freedoms, not as a result of defeat in war or foreign occupation, not as a result of some bloody revolution or social insurrection, but by their own will? And what would it say about us, my friends? What would it say about us if we let that happen? We are the heirs of an extraordinary tradition. Ours is the privilege to live in a country where our rulers are subject to the rest of us. Hold fast to that sublime patrimony we got from our parents and pass it on intact to our children.